Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. So glad to continue the summer readings series. And this week, in these next few episodes, as you're listening in real time, will be from A.W. Tozer's book, The Pursuit of God. Take time with these. When, when you hear not only in the introduction and the preface, when you hear a little bit about his life, you know, in my uh, Producers Way School USA that's going on uh, right now, uh, their July assignment is to take hold of a biography of someone, whether it be Watchman Nee, A.W. Tozer, Elizabeth Elliot, if it's, um, you know, whoever it might be, but someone. I, I know one of the students is reading about Hudson Taylor, reading people who went before us and reading about their life. And it's just so encouraging because you realize this is not some new fad, right? This isn't uh, something so radical. Right? This, is, this has been the norm of the lives of those that many times we stand in awe of them, but we never go any deeper to see what, what is it that actually happened in their life. And so in sharing... Uh, I believe it's chapters one and two over the course of these next episodes from Tozer's book, The Pursuit of God, you get a a deeper dive into um, what their life was like and what did God speak to them. And then they left those things for us to be able to read so that we can navigate with Holy Spirit through the days of our lives that we are in right now. So let these next episodes be of great encouragement to you as I read from A.W. Tozer's The Pursuit of God. Love you all. Continuing on, chapter 1, page 18 in my copy, as I carefully go through this reading myself. Oh, how this is piercing me. And I pray for you, it is the same. We need not fear that in seeking God only we may narrow our lives or restrict the motions of our expanding hearts. The opposite is true. We can well afford to make God our all, to concentrate, to sacrifice the many for the one. The author of the quaint old English classic, The Cloud of Unknowing, teaches us how to do this. Lift up thine heart unto God with a meek stirring of love, and mean himself and none of his goods. And there, too, look thee loath to think on aught but God himself. So that not work in thy wit, nor in thy will, but only God himself. This is the work of the soul that most pleaseth God. Close quote. Again, He recommends that in prayer we practice a further stripping down of everything, even of our theology. Quote, For it sufficeth enough a naked intent direct unto God without any other cause than himself. Close quote. Yet underneath all his thinking lay the broad foundation of New Testament truth, for he explains that by himself he means God that made thee and bought thee, and that graciously called thee to thy degree. And he is all for simplicity. If we would have religion lapped and folded in one word, for that thou shouldest have better hold thereupon, take thee but a little word of one syllable, for so it is better than of two. For even the shorter it is the better it accordeth with the work of the Spirit. And such a word is this word, God, or this word, love. When the Lord divided Canaan among the tribes of Israel, Levi received no share of the land. God said to him simply, I am thy part and thine inheritance. And by those words made him richer than all his brethren, richer than all the kings and rahas who have ever lived in the world. And there is a spiritual principle here, a principle still valid for every priest of the Most High God. 
The man who has God for his treasure has all things in one. Many ordinary treasures may be denied him, or if he is allowed to have them, the enjoyment of them will be so tempered that they will never be necessary to his happiness. Or if he must see them go one after one, he will scarcely feel a sense of loss. For having the source of all things, he has in one all satisfaction, all pleasure, all delight. Whatever he may lose, he has actually lost nothing, for he now has it all in one, and he has it purely, legitimately, and forever. O God, I have tasted thy goodness, and it has both satisfied me and made me thirsty for more. I am painfully conscious of my need of further grace. I am ashamed of my lack of desire. O God, thy triune God, I want to want thee. I long to be filled with longing. I thirst to be made more thirsty still. Show me thy glory, I pray thee, that so I may know thee indeed. Begin in mercy a new work of love within me. Say to my soul, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Then give me grace to rise and follow thee up from this misty lowland where I have wandered so long. In Jesus' name, amen. What a fitting close to chapter 1. And so we proceed on in our next episode to chapter 2. The Blessedness of Possessing Nothing. I pray you stay with me on this journey of our summer readings. I love you all. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.com.